music could be described as the art of sound, and sculpture is the art of mass, and so on. Games, in some ways, could be thought of as the art of math. Another way to think of a game is that it is teaching us kind of the, the uh, machinery of itself. And we learn to move and manipulate that machinery to navigate through that space. And most of the time we get by on, on the rules of thumb. We get by on rules of thumb for, well, frankly, everything in life. That's how we uh, do everything. We, we don't really think, but that's a whole other discussion. What we have here on the table is some of my board games collection. They all have kind of interesting histories and they reflect in different ways on different cultures. And a lot of them have served as inspiration points or departure points for a lot of game design going forward. Elements, you know, in, in my work that are centered around formalism and game grammar and things like that have been strongly influenced by going back and looking at you know, these er games, right? These uh, kind of fundamentals. This is actually the oldest game on the table. This is the game of Ur. Ur as in Babylon. <laughs> uh, there is a lot of ritual quality to games. There always has been. Uh, we see that in a game like this, which can be seen as a representation of life. We start out separate, we move forward, sometimes people are lucky with high rolls, sometimes they're not, and then you enter a period of competition where other people can set you back. And this is a very, it's very much a competitive game, and you're trying to get out and go to heaven um, <laughs> without getting killed along the way. A lot of games are about cultural learning, right? They're about um, learning how to hunt, how to throw things, how to chase things, how to see things move, you know, and you start out with simple sports like that, and then you work your way into things like understanding force projection, understanding enclosure, understanding, right, uh, concepts that are more abstract and in some ways more mathematical. Most of these games are, they're symmetrical games. This is six-way symmetry, <laughs> right? Uh, something like uh, Reversi or Chess or Checkers or Go. Most of these are symmetric games. Both players or more players, if they're a higher number, have the same capabilities. They have the same access to moves or verbs or actions. But there is a somewhat less common in tabletop uh, strain, which is the asymmetric game. Uh, the Toffel family is one example of those. Toffel is kind of mimicking what's been what goes on in that Germanic or Viking culture, where you have the the gold giver, or the ring giver, the jarl, the you know the nobleman, the king, and so it's an asymmetric game where one team plays defense and the king is on the board and they have to make sure the king escapes the attackers. And there are more attackers than there are defenders, and there's only one king. So it's the two sides are trying to accomplish different things. There's always representation, um, even in the most abstract of games. Um, and you can take the games and keep adding more and more of that to them. And you can start at either end. When you begin on a project, you might say, I want to create something that is about um, spatial relationships. Or you might say, I want to create something that is that gives me the experience of being in a kaleidoscope. Those are both perfectly valid starting points, um, and those two might very well be that as you work on the one end and you work on the other end, you'll come together in the middle and have a deep game about spatial relationships that makes you feel like you were in a kaleidoscope. Wonderful! That is actually what ludonarrative dissonance and consonance were originally about, was the idea that you could actually do that. So it's all about your level of ambition with a particular project. It's, it's not that one is worse than the other. But my background is actually as a writer, as a musician, <laughs> as a poet, and as a visual artist. So, you know, uh, but all of those fields also have very, uh, a lot of craft-centric stuff underlying them. They have mathematical relationships, they have 
well, it's a thumb. They have color theory and music theory and all of this other stuff. So I don't see any incompatibility behind, you know, formal craft approaches to this stuff and also saying, oh no, I'm making an experience-centric game about whatever. In some ways, you can think of a, a game as being a medium through which communication moves. When I make a move in chess, I'm telling you something, not just making a move in chess. And when you respond a particular way in poker, you're saying something. And then communication of cultural things, right? This Toffel represents a piece of communication about the social structure of Germanic peoples, and Ur represents a piece of communication about uh, the Babylonians.